My name is Maria Koinova and I'm the principal investigator of the European Research Council starting grant, Diasporas and Contested Sovereignty. Here I'm to discuss with you today a recently presented paper co-authored with my colleagues Ben Margulis and P uh, Philippe Branchard at the University of Warwick. This paper is asking why, when and uh, what conditions diasporas are mobilized in the countries in which they settled. So this is a very important question which has been at the core of our project from 2012 and it has been very instrumental into harnessing the energy of four other researchers who have done a lot of qualitative work and quantitative research. This project has been studying the Albanian, Armenian, Palestinian, Iraqi, Bosnian and Kurdish diasporas in five countries in Europe, which are the UK, the Netherlands, Sweden, Germany and France. When we started with this uh, work in 2012, the field that was giving opportunities for us to explain the question about the diaspora mobilization was very scarce. It was either based on case studies uh, or it was based on very scattered literature coming from conflict and post-conflict studies, foreign policy analysis and varieties of migration studies. At that point we decided to create a more systematic way of examination of this question and we launched into the field by everybody going into the questions that they were interested in their own sub-project of different diasporas. When we returned in 2014 back from the field with a very rich uh, knowledge about different diaspora mobilizations, we decided to look into how our uh, comparative knowledge can help develop a larger theory about diaspora mobilization. At that point, we launched uh, the first uh, wave of intercoder discussions and uh, sampled interviews from each, each other's work and discussed them thoroughly. My name is Ben Margulies. I am a postdoctoral fellow here on the ERC Diasporas and Contested Sovereignty Project. In early 2016, after the first wave of intercoder discussions, I began developing a codebook which would allow us to identify and count the phenomena that we believed affected diaspora mobilization, when, how, why they did so, etc. After the initial draft of the code book was created, uh, the principal investigator and I tested out between ourselves and developed further drafts. In March 2016, we began a pilot with five graduate students to see if independent observers could understand and use the code book and develop comparable results between them. That allowed us to further develop the code book and refine it. After the pilot was concluded in May, we chose two coders to examine and code a preliminary sample of interviews to produce a rigorous evidence base that in turn would inform the subsequent multiple correspondence analysis. I'm Philippe Blanchard. I'm part of the Department of Politics and International Studies and the QSTEP Center at Warwick. I have a general interest in methods, and in the case of the diaspora project, correspondence analysis reveals itself very useful. It's been used to study intelligence and social classes in psychology and sociology respectively, and to check if these two concepts have some practical uh, existence. In the case of the diaspora project, on the map you can see that there are two clouds of individual characteristics. The first one, mainly in red, is ben based on individuals' characteristics, such as having left their homeland in the context of political violence or being a man, while the second cloud is characterized by the way and how much they can access homeland institutions for their mobilization. These are two discoveries, we can say, from correspondence analysis. Our paper can help policymakers interact more effectively with diaspora activists and populations. It gives a novel view of how individual diaspora activists shape the field of politics in the diaspora. It also provides a model of how diasporas organize and operate that is applicable to a wide range of diasporas and their activists. It gives a stronger evidence base for policymakers facing pressing issues who might otherwise have to rely on analyses that rest on studies of more narrow extent. Finally, our model is based on rigorous on-the-ground research and will be more valid than those based on individual case studies or large quantitative data sets derived entirely from secondary sources.